Hello, and welcome to an exciting edition of Gotham Sound TV. I am very excited to be here with Ben and Jason from Sure, and we're here doing a, a virtual product launch. Uh, and so, guys, this is uh, this is amazing. This is very cool. We are here to introduce uh, the Sure AD3 Axiant Digital Plug-On, uh, and this has been. Uh, a long time coming. We, we're very excited. It's an exciting addition to Axiom Digital uh, product line. Uh, what can you guys tell us about it? Thanks, Peter. Yeah, we're excited too. Uh, this is the first day, uh, the first session uh, of the AD3 plug-on transmitter. So uh, I think a lot of users have been expecting this from us, and we're pleased to provide what the people want. Um, but basically, you know, having a plug-on transmitter in the portfolio unlocks a whole bunch of applications that you know weren't necessarily covered by the existing transmitters in the Axiom Digital line. Uh, I think in location audio, it, you know, boom pole comes to mind right off the rip. Uh, but the, of course, there are plenty of other applications where a plug-on is just convenient and tidy, and just plug it in and it works. So uh, we we have it; it's here, and uh, I'd love to show it to you. Yeah, uh, walk, walk us walk us through some of the features. Uh, so you mentioned boom pole use. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, I should say we've seen this in beta form, and and a lot of our customers, few of our customers, our Axiom customers have have given us very positive feedback about it. Uh, boom pole means it's got real phantom power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it has both the uh, twelve volt uh, for AB powering uh, as well as uh, the full forty eight uh, for microphones that require it. And uh, it's lightweight. And and can you uh, tell us what kind of batteries it takes? Absolutely. Yeah. The uh, 83 itself uh, is two AA batteries, uh, primary operation. And uh, if you'd like, you can also use it with the SB900A uh, rechargeable uh, battery as well. And so with the SB900A, it'll you'll get full uh, telemetry. I guess, you know, um, we have a little bit of time. And so at this point, I think it's worth uh, briefly going over uh, some of the attributes of Axiom Digital for those that are coming to this uh, kind of new. Um, I think that's, so that's perfect. Yeah. Um, we actually have a, a couple slides here I'd like to share that we can kind of go through uh, the portfolio of Axiom Digital for those that aren't familiar with it. But uh, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting, and, and we appreciate all the support Gotham and, and Gotham's customers have helped us out with this, uh, especially in the location uh, sound industry. It's, uh, it's quite exciting to see a, a new product like Axiom Digital take off so well. So um, as Peter was saying, we're going to kind of dip in here and just show a little bit about uh, Axiom Digital itself, uh, the product, and the recap. You know, you basically have your receiver either a two or four channel. And then there are two series of transmitters. You have your AD, uh, which is your basic level of transmitter, and your ADX. And uh, the ADX series has the show link remote control. Uh, allows you to change whatever parameters you want without having to get the pack from the talent. Uh, you can do it all remotely, which is, which is beautiful. Um, another kind of cool thing for the location and cart sound use is the DC powering option with Axiom Digital. And I think this is one of the really cool features that made this kind of, I would don't hesitate to say explode for the uh, uh, in a good way for the um, location industry. The uh, DC redundant powering option was really uh, kind of initially designed for those broadcasters and users to have dual supply rails in case the AC power fails, it can go over the DC automatically and not miss a beat. Uh, well, Gotham and customers figured out that you could easily just use a DC with like a PSC or other power distribution uh, in your cart and just power it indefinitely that way. So uh, we're excited to always, it's always interesting to us to see users take things and, and do cool stuff with it that maybe we didn't anticipate. Uh, but this is, yeah, I mean, we, we were awesome. able to build, yeah. I mean, really incredible DC only racks and carts uh, with this. Yeah. Oh, great. And uh, Jared, thank you for, um, Jared's uh, our our guru behind the behind the curtain. If you don't mind putting a link to the West Side Story cart um, with Terrence McCormick Maitland, uh, that'd be awesome too. But yeah, these are beautiful cards. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, your typical cart, you got your recorder and your mixer and your monitoring gear, maybe some uh, intercom and uh, possibly uh, some you know, PSM 1000 down there, antenna distribution, uh, and then many, many channels of Axiom Digital in a small space, all powered off DC uh, or AC if you have it. So uh, this has been kind of the new standard and a uh, lot of productions, a lot of good feedback about the, the sound quality, ease of use and everything, small size of transmitter packs and now we have the 83 uh to kind of help help complete this portfolio even further which is wonderful and these look like uh in the heights and west side story carts i think uh, you're correct and yep. drew kunin and, and todd maitland's carts yeah wow that, exactly. yeah, they're beautiful yeah these were yep. two uh built at gotham with awesome. gotham yeah yeah love it um so a little bit about the features itself. Uh, I think I'm, pretty much everybody in this room knows what a plug-on is, but you know, a plug-on transmitter takes whatever you want and makes it wireless in, in the most simple sense. It's like a body pack transmitter, but it has an XLR connector on it. Uh, a few other features that make it more user-friendly for uh, use with a wide variety of devices. Uh, it can be, a, you know, like we talked about, a shotgun on the end of a boom pole, uh, a plant mic, uh, something on a podium that's wireless to kind of hide in, in the lectern or the podium itself. Uh, you can even use it for point-to-point -point, uh, applications. Uh, I know a lot of wedding videographers like to use it to plug onto the DJ or the the sound guy and get the feed from the uh, actual music back to their camera so they can make the video. Uh, so uh, it's I'm really excited to see what you're going to do with it next and uh, other use cases we might not have anticipated for it, but one more piece of the puzzle. Uh, all the features you like about Axiom Digital are included with the 83, which is cool. Uh, and then there's a couple more as well. So, you know, you get the great sound quality, the wide tuning bandwidth, the encryption, if you'd like it, uh, great range, uh, high channel counts in dense RF environments and so forth, uh, metal construction, all, all the things that you come to expect from Axiom Digital just in a, in a cube, cube kind of format. I would give a special shout out to the locking mechanism. That's really Absolutely. Great yeah. Feature. That's awesome, Peter. Yeah, the, we're going to talk about, I'll show you with a virtual hands-on in a minute, uh, how that actually works. Uh, it, but it's something we kind of uh, grew from the ground up, and it's uh, it's unique in the, the way it works, how it works. Uh, also, the fact we, we really took a lot of care to make sure that it didn't put any additional wear and tear on your microphones, because I know some locking mechanisms out there, uh, over repeated use, it can kind of wear out those uh, really expensive shotguns and other Colette series of microphones you may have and so forth. So... Um, yeah, the SB900 does give you about eight hours of battery use uh, continuously, which is really nice. Um, slightly less if you're going to be using phantom power, uh, but you get a, like a really long runtime. And, and Peter was mentioning earlier about the telemetry. If you're using the SB900, you'll know exactly hours and minutes of uh, how long you have until you need to go change that battery or, or get one, a, a fresh one in there. But um, really, really neat. Um, 81 itself is uh, similar, except the 83 adds, uh, like we talked about, the locking power, the collar, the XLR connector, the phantom powering options, uh, and there's also a high-pass filter. So uh, one, one more thing that you can just put early in the chain if you want to roll off everything uh, anywhere from 40 to 240, you know, typical you know, 100 hertz or, or so uh, is common, and that is a new feature for this product. When we look at what you get in the box, you get the transmitter itself, the leatherette pouch, a couple of double A's to get you started, a USB-C to USB-A type cable, and a uh, body pack pouch, a zippered pouch, and so forth. The, uh, we talked a little bit about the batteries. It's kind of cool how the battery door opens up. It's a uh, kind of like a gull wing design, like on a sports car, if you will. Uh, there's uh, You can either use the two double A's or the SB900. Uh, there's a little shim inside that'll keep your uh, AA batteries uh, nice and tight to the, the transmitter so they don't flop around. Uh, and if you're not using that and you're using the rechargeable, which is optional, you can store the little shim right in the compartment in the middle there, uh, which is kind of a neat, neat feature. And then uh, I think another kind of cool thing is the, uh, the USB-C port on the back end not only can uh, make the transmitter work indefinitely with an AC power source, uh, but you can also use it to charge the SB900. So if you're out in the field and you don't have your charger with you, you could use the SB900 internally. And as long as it's connected USB-C uh, to a regular power source, it will charge the battery inside of the transmitter. Uh, this can be great for uh, those on the run or if you're on a remote shoot, you don't have a lot of powering options. Or, um, you know, we see some like award shows where these are tucked inside of, a, of that podium or the lectern in the bottom. And 
if you have power available, you can power it all day. And if you don't, the battery can act as a backup. So uh, it's almost like a mini UPS uh, inter uninterruptible, ah, uninterruptible power supply. Mm -hmm. The uh, the frequency bands we have uh, actually digital is wideband for the most part. So most users will gravitate towards the G57, which gives us access to all the leftover uh, UHF range after this latest auction. Uh, we also offer it in both the 600 megahertz and 900 megahertz versions. If you want to take advantage of the duplex gap uh, guard bands, uh, for example, in the 600 or the STL range in the 900 megahertz with appropriate licensing. So we have all the different flavors uh, for the ranges with the emphasis on G57 being the most popular. Uh, we also have the VPH, which is a kind of a newer product and we're excited about it. I have one here uh, also, I have one on the slide. Uh, the VPH takes any sure wireless capsule and makes it uh, wired. Uh, so uh, the, the advantage is that you are, might already have a bunch of sure transmitters uh, with the screwable capsules. And these are all standard, You know, they all work with all of our products and very similar thread pattern and uh, you can swap them around like Legos. Uh, the VPH lets you use those in a wired uh, configuration. In addition, the VPH is quite long. So uh, when you put the microphone on it, it gives you a little extra reach if you're in an interview situation or uh, just want to have a backup, for example. Uh, but in this slide here, we're showing it with the 83 uh, as kind of a run and gun reporter wireless microphone. Um, maybe you have a little extra room there for a mic flag or a station identifier. Uh, Jason's got one right now, uh, plugged right in with the 83, as you can see, uh, being powered via USB-C. So 100% powered by the, by the cable. Yeah. Uh, sounds good. Nice. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, awesome. The uh, VPH does require phantom power uh, to, to make it work because there's active electronics inside, but uh, with 83 and most XLR sources, that's not a problem. So uh, just a little bit to light it up and, and make it all go. Uh, the other advantage is that if you're using the VPH with a kind of the, the Colette series or the swappable capsules, we have some other optional accessories that are lesser known, but again, are like Legos. And if you want to use them, you just put them in line. And if you don't, you don't have to. Uh, but we have a hard mute switch called the UAMS which lets you turn the mic on and off right at the capsule. And we also have the mic flag extender kit. Uh, so if you order that, you can kind of stack them together and make the microphone as long as you want uh, for better reach or bigger hands or uh, other unique situations. I think at one trade show, we had like all of them stacked together and it was like a lightsaber about three feet long or so. So um, yeah, there's some nice options there and it's uh, all universal. So you can, you can mix and match any of these to your heart's content. Um, I got one right here. So I'm going to go to uh, camera two here and kind of show you what's going on uh, with 83 and kind of a virtual hands-on since this is our virtual launch we're excited about. Uh, so I'm going to kind of mute the, uh, the presentation here. And then I'm just going to go to camera two and kind of show you the 83 in all its glory. So as Peter was talking about, the lock-in connector uh, definitely you know, you should pay some attention because it is unique. Um, there's a, if you look here, you can kind of see there's a, a lock and an unlock icon and uh, it's your XLR connector, of course. And if I have a, a microphone, which I do like this 58 here, I can plug it in just like anything else. Now, until I lock it, it'll, it can easily be unplugged um, if I push the collar down. So it's a, right now it's still kind of locked in even if it's on the unlocked mode, but to really get the mic off, you have to kind of pull this collar in and then out and it'll prevent your mic from falling off. Uh, for extra security, of course, you can actually rotate it to the lock function, and now it's really not gonna come out unless you rotate it and then pull down the other with uh, your two fingers and so forth. Uh, this is cool. Another kind of cool feature uh, might be overlooked is that there's actually an audio indicator here with this LED light. So if you can see when I tap on the mic, uh, this little tiny LED will light up and um, let you know what kind of audio you're getting. If it's clipping, of course, and you're really hot, it'll turn yellow and, and subsequently red uh, when you're in the, the red line. And that's nice. Kind of little uh, visual feedback there. So um, we have the four buttons on the front, nothing uh, unfamiliar there, just like all Axiom Digital. Uh, there's the IR window. You have your uh, rubber cover on the back here for your USB-C. I pop this open. You can see there's just a USB-C there for that powering and um, uh, charging as well. At this time, those are the only functions for power. Uh, it maybe in the future, they might unlock some other advanced functionality with it, but uh, it is just for powering at this time. Uh, right now, I have my uh, USB cable here plugged into just a 
port on the computer. And I just plug this in and you can kind of see the light on the back it shows that it's charging. And on the front, it'll tell you charge status. Uh, you can see here, it says EXT in the bottom left. And that means it's on external power and it can run indefinitely like Jason was doing uh, just a couple seconds ago. In addition to that, we can kind of demo the, uh, the gold wing doors here. If I pop this open, uh, just like this, and uh, it, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like a sports car, a side shot door. Uh, I got an SB900 here. Uh, there's the battery shim storage. If you want, uh, you can keep the shim in there so you don't lose it and when to go back and forth. Uh, but that's that's basically it. Uh, nice and secure, heavy, uh, not too heavy though, um, and robust metal construction. So you know it's going to last. It's designed to be uh, rugged. Um, you can of course put the cover on it too. And then you have even more protection and a belt clip, uh, which is all included in the package. So uh, a couple of things I just want to show you in the menu. I'm not going to go through every feature, but some of the new features are worthwhile. So in the audio function, you'll notice that there's a new menu for Phantom. And uh, of course, you can do Phantom 48 plus 12 or off and uh, your choice, uh, 48 there. And then also there is a HP filter, which we talked about. And this is the new function. Uh, where you can adjust that roll off to something sensible, like maybe 100 or so, uh, but it goes anywhere from 40 to 240, as we mentioned before. So that's that's a nice little fit functionality as well. But um, no frills, super easy to use, great sound quality, all the Axiom Digital stuff you normally expect from the 83, just in a uh, uh, plug-on format uh, compatible with all Axiom Digital uh, other devices. So. We're excited about it, and we're really happy to be able to, you know, show it to you virtually uh, through this method, which is which is kind of cool. Uh, give you a virtual hands-on of uh, what we're looking at here. Pretty neat. So, um, with that, uh, going to kind of pivot here, uh, and I think Jason's going to talk to us a little bit about another new initiative with Axiom Digital, which was recently announced. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. Um, uh, if anybody has any questions about that stuff and you want to put it into the the where, wherever you're watching this stream at, uh, we'll try to get those answered as well as they come along. Um, I'm going to jump in here and talk about uh, just, just one other product that came on came on to uh, came on to the to, to the sure market here recently. Sorry, I, I thought I was muted for a minute, but I wasn't. Um, so uh, you've seen our Axion Digital Transmitter Suite now, the 81s, the ADXs, and now our 83 plug-on transmitter. Uh, and we also have recently partnered with a company called Quantum, uh, or Q5X. Um, and so, some of you may have uh, seen them or are familiar with them. But if you're not, uh, Quantum is a company that made um, a suite of custom transmitters for mainly sports and extreme occasions. Um, and they made analog transmitters that had modulation schemes that would work with multiple people's or multiple manufacturers' receivers. Um, so they've had their transmitters in, in a, a tons of locations like the NBA, MLB, NHL, coach mics, player mics. Um, if you're out of New York, Radio City has quite a few of these mics for tap shoes that were custom made. Um, and so we partnered with them to basically give, them, uh, give us the ability to use their transmitters and their transmitters work with our Axiant Digital Scheme. Um, so this is the lineup uh, that Sure is offering uh, that are in the Quantum or Q5X form factors. The first one is the player mic. Uh, the second one is the aqua mic and then their mic commander. So the mic commander is their remote control system that Quantum developed um, to go with their initial line of transmitters. Um, so everything about this is still Quantum. On them, except for the fact that it now has the Axiant digital chip inside of it. So it works with all of our AD receivers. It will sync with your AD receiver. It will send telemetry, all of those things that you're used to seeing. Um, it's just going to be in a, in a quantum form factor and with a mic commander um, remote control software um, and handheld remote control unit. Um, so we'll dive in a little bit to each unit. The player mic is a flexible and and concealable rugged polymer housing. It's got a single pin Limo connector um, on that, which is proprietary to them. So you'll need to get um, an adapter cable, which uh, Sure or Quantum can provide you with um, to work with uh, some of your current or new lavaliers. Ben, thank you so much. You've got uh, a, a demo here. So you can see the AD1 body pack there on the right in terms of size and form factor. And on the left is the player mic. Uh, so you can, it is a, uh, 
pretty flexible. Um, there are quite a few major sports leagues that this is the only microphone they will allow to be put in a jersey because of its soft form factor and its flexibility. Um, doesn't pose an injury risk. Uh, it's got an internal internal lithium ion chargeable battery, 210 and 20 milliwatt suckable power, um, remote control via the mic commander as well. And they make we make two versions, one's regular and then they're short. And that really just has to do with battery life and the size of the body pack that you're looking for. Um, the next unit uh, we're pretty excited about is the Aqua Mic. Um, and this is a full aluminum housed, waterproof housing, fully submersible up to 10 meters. Um, so this is a, a brick of a transmitter, if you will. Um, it's got a six pin Limo connector on the top of it. And that has to do with waterproof housing um, on it as well. So again, you'll need to have a little adapter to work with um, your current lavaliers, but we provide those or you can order those from us or Quantum. Uh, again, this is the the Axiom Digital Encryption Enabled 256 AES transmission scheme that we have in all of our transmitters, uh, 10 milliwatt to 250 milliwatt power options on this unit. Um, there's also two options here, the long and the short, um, and that just has to do with the size of the battery again, and a removable, removable belt clip. Um, so if you can dream up a transmitter, I think we've we've pretty much nailed it on the head here from the Axiom Digital Suite, from the micro body pack to now Aqua Mic and Player Mic and the AD3 plug-on. Uh, we got a, a ton of options to go with all of your Axiom Digital receivers. Um, and then last up, we're going to cover a little bit here about Twinplex, which you may or may not have heard of. Uh, hopefully you have. Twinplex is Sure's new line of lavalier elements. Um, these are dual diaphragm um, lavalier elements that um, are pretty much known for uh, currently their exceptional sound quality and their durability. Those are the two main points we really wanted to hammer home with this product line. Um, so it's a dual diaphragm, twice the surface area means twice the sound, <laughs> if you will. Um, unprecedented off-axis consistency. So this lavalier has got a lot of um, off-axis uh, rejection as well as less off-axis sound elements that take place when it's moved from left to right. Uh, and then the cable durability is something that we're really, really uh, excited about. It's a dual spiral internal cable, um, basically meaning that it would have to break twice in the same place for you to have a cable failure. Uh, very little memory effect on this cable, fully paintable, um, pretty dynamic uh, microphone here to use uh, for multiple areas. And then the accessory package that comes with this um, a bunch of flat and presence caps. You can change the EQ. Um, you've got a vampire clip, a gator clip, um, windscreen, everything you would expect in a full accessory kit from a, from a professional style lavalier. And we offer it in multiple uh, pinouts. So three pin limo, TGQ, single dot or micro dot, if you will, and then um, unterminated as well as a XLR preamp. Uh, so we just wanted to take a quick moment to go over some of the other products that we think make sense for Gotham customers to have a look at while we were here. Uh, but mainly, we're really excited about this uh, 83 plug-on transmitter here that I'm talking to you all through. Uh, so I guess at this point, we've covered, I think, all the things we want to cover in this bad boy, unless we've got some questions that need to come in um, from the field, which I see a couple here uh, that may be coming through. Uh, let's see, 48 volt Phantom for AD3. Was that the measure that was taken on the eight hour runtime where we're using 48 volt Phantom? Uh, ben, do you know? Yeah, it's a good question. So the runtime is approximately eight hours with the uh, the SB900 rechargeable battery. Uh, and with Phantom engaged, it will be slightly less. I'm not going to say it's going to be like half, but it'll be uh, slightly less. I can get those numbers or exact numbers uh, to you in, in a little bit if you want to reach out and uh i can i can get those from engineering and whatnot but i think ballpark it will be maybe you know maybe six or seven instead of eight uh, or something like that uh, it's not not drastic change yeah it was definitely in the six hour range with 48 phantom power that's that's what i remember hey i have um some exciting things to share about uh the twinplex which is uh that if you um if you've seen uh, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, uh, mm -hmm. we replaced a lot of the guts of the like non-functioning or semi-functioning vintage microphones with Twinplex lavaliers. And there's an article out there, Jared. If you have um, if you have easy access to it, if you don't mind putting it in the chat about um, how Matt Price, the production mixer, um, was able to use that to to great advantage. 
So yeah, it's a great, it's a fantastic sounding uh, uh, lavalier. Not just obviously hidden in vintage microphones, but also hidden on people. And it, yeah, it's it's really uh, uh, anybody wants to check it out, come come you know hit us up at Gotham, and and we will absolutely get you a demo of them. There's three different uh, models. Um, you know, some are, are more appropriate for for uh, film use than others, but yeah, we will get them in your hands. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's really oh there yeah thank you Jared, um, miking and mixing the marvelous Mrs. Mazels is in the name of the uh, article and it's in the chat now. Um, I'm just looking to see if there's been any other um, any other questions. Uh, I guess the one thing that I would stress uh, in terms of Axiom features um, that we we should address is. Uh, Axion has uh, obviously the ability to be uh, for transmitters to be controlled over the air. Um, these transmitters uh, don't have that, but they do have. Well, they don't have the ability to be controlled uh, from uh, you know through uh, the Zigbee remote control protocol. But um, I also feel like in the AD3's case. Oftentimes, for our customers, that's going to be in the hands of a boom operator. So I don't really see that as a liability at all. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, the fact is uh, the preamps in that transmitter sound so amazing. It's very, very hard to overload that uh, transmitter. Um, that there's really um, the kind of fussing that, that goes on sometimes where you have to constantly adjust um, uh, transmitter levels doesn't really exist for the 83, which is exciting. Uh, question from the chat, uh, 83 estimated ship date? Now? Shipping now. Well, that, that works. Excellent. Um, well, Guys, I, I'm uh, I'm excited. Any and these are available now. So anybody wants a demo, uh, please hit us up. Um, this is this is really great. Absolutely. Um, one thing I, I think would be cool to show is that if we go to the you know we have battery telemetry on uh, the eighty three, it'd be nice to just turn the power on and off and see what the the runtime differences is. You know, Peter was saying it was about six to seven hours versus the eight and whatnot. Um, but there is intelligent battery inside, so uh, that's a, a really cool thing. So what I got here in my hand is 83, and uh, I'm going to start it with the, the phantom power off, of course, right? So inside of uh, with phantom power off, it'll take a second, and it'll calculate out what we got going on here. And uh, this one says about 723. It's been on for maybe a little over half an hour. And if I go into the menu and go to audio phantom, and let's put it on the full 48. Let's see here. That'll recalculate out and give us another estimated uh, runtime. So it was at 7.23 before, and now we're looking at uh, 4.28 4 or so. So it does, does have a little bit of a hit uh, to provide that phantom power. Uh, of course, if you don't need it, you can you can turn it off, but it should be should be around that what we were talking about. What uh, what microphone are you are you going into? Uh, I got the VPH right now, which does require Phantom. So um, I, I wanted to have a microphone attached that was using some of it, so it can get um, some sort of estimate. Yeah. And which battery is in there? Uh, the SB nine hundred. Yeah. Nice. Because of course, if you're using just regular double A's, you're not going to get the uh, hours and minutes uh, of the telemetry. Only, only with the SB nine hundred has that special, uh, special chip in there with all the information. So. Exactly. Good. Yeah. Well, all right. Uh, well, that's um, that, that's that's great. I mean, that's that's really uh, that's amazing news. Um, yeah. Thank thank you guys for for sharing. Um, any other questions? Uh, any other questions in the in the uh, chat? Just taking a quick look. All right, so uh, I guess we'll um, uh, we will um, uh, let the Facebook feed catch up to us um, and see just before we sign off. Um, but uh, 
Ben and Jason, it's it's really it's really good to see you. Where 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 am I seeing you? Where Ben? Where are you? Where 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 is your room? Uh, it's in my, my home office here in Connecticut. Um, we're just uh, kind of been holed up here for the last three months and learning a lot about audio and video and streaming and more video stuff I've ever never knew I knew. So it's it's been a great experience uh, to dive into the video side of things. Yeah, I think we've all had to we've all had to do that. Yeah. It's, it's a scary new world. And Jason, where are you? Where where's your room? Quick learning curve. Uh, my room. I am in Nashville, Tennessee. Nice. Um, so I've uh, been here for about eight months now, loving it, enjoying some of the outdoors, and learning uh, learning the same things Ben's been talking about here, becoming webinar experts, I suppose. So um, not not a whole lot to complain about yet, but uh, hoping everybody gets back to work here pretty soon would be nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you came from live events in in Vegas. I did, I did. Yeah, I spent most of my life in Vegas. Did a couple of years in LA, um, and I did uh, live broadcasts, RF management for quite a few years, and recently moved out to Nashville. So, uh, Atlanta, Nashville. I'm here. I'm in your neck of the woods. Uh, nice to e meet you, I suppose. So, this is us. This has been great, Peter. Thank you uh, for yeah. joining us. Uh, thanks, thanks for inviting me. There are um, just in the few minutes we have left. Uh, yeah. There is a um, uh, there, well. There's a comment I'll share. Still dreaming of a DC powered bag friendly Axiant receiver. Uh, yeah, that is a comment, and uh, I, I note that comment. Um, and then, um, what is the what is the power output? Uh, this is from Jonathan Mitchell. What is the power output? Is this controlled when you use multiple? uh radio mics uh i'm assuming rf output power ben i i saw it in your presentation but if you don't mind uh re- reiterating no absolutely i'm glad you brought that up um so in the menu it's actually 2 10 and 35 with nominally being on 10. so if i go into the uh the radio menu here and power you can see it's on normal right now and that's what those calculations were but 2 10 and 35 um Normally, 10 milliwatts is more than enough to get you uh, 300 feet or, or thereabouts. And then the 35 is uh, 35 digital is probably akin to like 50 or 100 analog if you're used to that. So very good yeah. range and, uh, and and features. But 10 10 is normally where we would would start with it. Yeah, that's that's right. And Chris Harris says phantom power, and the answer is yes, 48 volt phantom power. Yep. And 12 uh, feet. And 12. And 12. Yeah. yeah. And 12, I assume for those like a CMC six that can take it, you know, Shep CMC six would actually get you improved battery life. I would imagine. If they, yes, it would a little less output power. Uh, some microphones don't need the full 48. Um, right. And then of course, if you're using a T powered or a B powered 12 volt mics that need it, it's there. Um, what, what headphone mic set are using at Gotham? Um, this is left over from a previous, previous presentation. It's a Clearcom, uh, FreeSpeak 2 belt pack actually, um, through, it's basically like a $30,000 USB interface is what I've created. So let's not talk about that. Um, gonna need, uh, gonna need an underwater TX and lavs for a water tank shoot. What can you recommend? Um, you know, well, so I think, uh, Aquamic. You know, yeah, Aquamic has that answered, covered. Absolutely. Yeah, in the, yeah. In the Q5X. Uh, yeah, so Quantum, the partnership with Quantum gives us that Aquamic, and uh, it is fully submersible aluminum waterproof housing. Um, absolutely. You, you looked like you were going to say something there, Peter. Well, um, so then there's a good follow-up question, which is actually really uh, in, an interesting, very interesting question. Mm-hmm. Will the Q5X transmitters with AD chips lose their ability to, to be received by non-axiant receivers, by quantum receivers? So, yeah, let's clarify this. and Maybe we didn't touch, touch base on this, but these Q5X transmitters historically have been analog all their lives, and uh, the Q5X team has been great. They are known to make Q5X transmitters that work with analog receivers from Shure and Sennheiser and others uh, and so forth. Uh, this product that in my, in my hands here is a partnership with Q5X and Axiom Digital. So what we did is we worked together to use their engineering housing and their whole platform of the microphone, but we put the brains of Axiom Digital on a chip or a 
circuit board assembly inside of this. So this is a only Axiom digital compatible version of the Q5X microphone system. Uh, it is not analog. It will only work with Axiom digital, uh, although they still make both, you know, platforms. As you can imagine, everything is migrating towards digital. So we're only going to see more digital in the future. And uh, we, we believe it will be the future. So, um, and the future is here. And that's why we're really excited to work uh, with their team and Shure's engineering team on a, on a kind of a, a joint task force project uh, with this. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. And it still is remote controllable. I'm sorry for my sort of verbal explosion earlier. It is remote controllable through the quantum uh, handheld device. Mike Commander. Yeah, Mike, Mike Commander. Commander. Yeah. Correct. Um, all right. And the weight with batteries uh, in the 83, presumably. Glad you brought that up. Uh, let's check that out right now. That, so, that is, he didn't, uh, look Brett's at kid. this. I just happen to have a, wow. a scale here at my desk and I, you know, I was going back and forth with it and uh, a lot of people, you know, kind of look at it and they're, they're, uh, they say, Oh wow, that thing's really big and, and, and so forth. So um, what I have here is I got the 83, of course, and I actually, I'm just going to take uh, the batteries out for comparison purposes. Uh, so uh, we can do the same here. So here's an 83 uh, without the pouch, without the batteries and so forth. And uh, we're looking at about, 8.6 ounces, 8.6 ounces or so. And just for comparison, I have another uh, Sennheiser analog and that was 8.6 on ours. And this is an analog transmitter without batteries inside. And this one is gonna be about 7.3. So even though it does look um, maybe slightly larger uh, in the photos versus a Sennheiser, another historical plug-on, uh, it's only about one ounce-ish uh more weight so they really did some cool engineering and great um you know metal and everything what it's constructed of to keep the weight down even though it does look physically larger uh we've tested it with gotham and, and beta testing and there's no problem putting it on a k-tech pole or any other you know boom pole there's enough clearance there uh, for everything to fit properly and, and not be an issue so um keep in mind you know we were comparing one ounce difference where you were talking analog versus all the digital cool stuff that's in this that only digital can provide so quite worth it in my opinion uh yes uh yes uh emmanuel uh asks would you guys be coming out with an axiom receiver which is bag friendly well we're always working on new and exciting things at sure so i can't confirm or deny that rumor at this time but uh you know we have heard this feedback and uh we've relayed it to our engineering department so um Stay tuned. We'll we'll have to see. Uh, very good. That uh, I I I I like that answer. Um, all right, Chris Harris. Uh, love that sure is the only one doing true diversity transmission. Uh, would uh, really make this a step above the competition outside for obvious quality and frequency management benefits. Um, you know, I don't. I feel like, and we don't have time, unfortunately, I don't think, um, to really do the Axion digital system justice. Um, but yeah, f uh, frequency uh, diversity transmission is a cool feature. Um, not in the 83 necessarily, but I wonder if you can just say a few words about it. Sure. Uh, so we have a couple different techniques, uh, and one is the frequency diversity transmission. Uh, we have a special handheld uh, that actually can broadcast on two frequencies simultaneously. So, uh, you know, we have a handheld like just looks like a regular wireless microphone, uh, but it can actually broadcast the same audio on two frequencies. Uh, we also have another thing called frequency diversity operation. Uh, when you want to double pack somebody, you could uh, give talent two body packs that they wear. And they will be transmitting on different frequencies, but on with the same audio. You can use a Y cable or two lavaliers co-placed together, and you have extra redundancy there. Uh, so the receiver makes the decision if one of those frequencies is bad or not receiving properly, it'll seamlessly switch over to the other one uh, without missing a beat. And then lastly, we have our uh, interference detection and avoidance, which is a fancy way of everybody calls it frequency hopping, you know, when you get into trouble and there's a problem with your frequency uh, with the ADX series remote controllable transmitters and our spectrum manager uh, you can actually have the system just automatically fix issues on the fly without even doing anything and I know um, I know Drew and uh, some others in the city have 
realized that firsthand on, on a shoot where things changed and the system just reacted and it fixed itself basically. And you don't have to worry about your frequencies. So uh, yeah, we have some really cool bells and whistles and advanced functionality that only Axiom Digital can provide. And it's really nice to have the plug-on transmitter be a part of that system. A absolutely, yeah. And, and, uh, and to Chris Harris's comments, I, I note them. Um, you know, uh, yeah, the AD3, um, because it doesn't have the X iteration in the model number, it's not remote controllable um, uh, over the air, uh, infrared only. That's right. Uh, right. It's a great way to remember it. Right. If the part number has an X in it, it does have that remote control, uh, the ADX series. It is a true digital diversity transmission scheme still. It just won't do any of the smart features. Correct. Uh, but not dual. Is it? It's not dual frequency. No, 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 no. no. It's not dual frequency. No. Okay. Right. It's not dual uh, frequency. Although you could use it in frequency diversity mode with, uh, say, for example, for some reason you had an XLR source and you split that to two plug-ons. You could broadcast on two separate frequencies and then have the receiver switch between them. It could do that just like you would do with two body packs. But it doesn't have any of the remote control on the fly frequency changes on a single channel uh, or the one transmitter broadcasting uh, uh, to two frequencies in the same box. Yeah. Right. Got it. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Um, well, all right. Uh, if, if, uh, you bet Chris, and if, if anybody else has any, um, if you guys want to have any comments or anything, I think we're, I think this is it, right? 11, 1145. I think we, we nailed the time. Yeah, we did. Uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, kudos to us. Um, guys, thank you so much. It's so, it's so good to see you. I can't, I can't wait, uh, to, to see you guys in, in person. Um, Agreed. but you know, Me too. yeah. The a webcam, uh, you know, I mean, it's probably we'll the best camera for, for all of us. So, yeah, yeah, for all of us. Yeah. Uh, and to all of our brothers and sisters uh, in the in the entertainment industry, I, I just hope we get to work soon, and I hope we can stay healthy. And it's nice to see that you guys are healthy. And and thanks a lot. Thanks yeah, for having us, thanks, Peter. Peter. It's been thanks, fun. Gotham. Yeah.